So how do you think like a scientist? I think this is the most important thing that you can take away from this channel um, is how do you actually think like a research scientist? So the two really important things that I think are critical for understanding science is the first thing is that we're coming up with an idea about the world and we're trying to explain what the world is, right? But the second thing is that we think about the world in a probabilistic sense. We don't really have an understanding of how the world actually works. And even when we have a good understanding, we realize it's not that great. And that's all that probability means is what we're doing is sort of two components of looking around the world is the first thing is, is we're trying to explain what is going on, what is really going on. And then the second component is thinking about the probability of something actually happening. So we're looking at the world as if we are, you know, collecting things. And when you do that, when you sort of count and you figure out, okay, what is the likelihood of something happening? What is the chance of this happening? We get a good sense of really what's going on. So this means you simply have to go into any scenario. Um, wherever you might be, and you just simply start looking around and saying, hey, how can I count this? What can I do to understand that this can be converted into numbers? And it's pretty simple. You just go into any circumstance and you start counting. Maybe you look the number of people that go into a lineup, for example, per hour. Maybe you just count, um, you stop and you start counting the number of cars that go by, or you start counting what's how many blades of grass that there are in a certain location. And as you start counting these, as you just start looking at the world as if it's just like, this is the world, right? You're just looking at it and from sort of a nat naturalist perspective and you're seeing the world as if it actually exists independent of how you actually understand the world at this moment. And you just start counting those things and you start counting, you just do simple averages. So what's a simple average? And count the number of times that you see something that happening divided by the number of times that you actually counted that particular food counted to look for that particular thing that's it and once you start looking at those simple averages you start looking at what is actually occurring what what what's the magnitude i mean it's interesting right so i see in the background right now i see all of these leaves right here right like all of those leaves if i counted that I'd have a nice little pattern of what's actually going on. And I could explain the, the, the pattern of how trees are falling from a tree because I'm gonna see that there's more leaves that are in the middle, right? And there might be, you might actually have this sort of puzzle where you see all these, these leaves that are, that are more closely towards the middle and there's like a dividing point. Well, that tells me that there's likely some interference that's going on. People are blowing leaves around to make it look in a certain way. So I want you to take a, a, a take a step back and think about how you can think about the world as if you're a scientist and think about the world in terms of thinking of, hey, can I explain what's going on? And then what's it actually look like, right? Just start counting things. And as you just start counting things and you start thinking about what is going on, just, just counting, just that's it, right? Like simple counts. I'm a big believer that that's all you really need to do in science is to just count things, to see what's going on and plot, make a nice little picture of what that looks like. What does that look like? And once you understand that there are patterns in this world, you really start understanding that, wait a minute, there is some rhyme or reason why things actually happen in different ways. And then that rhyme and reason is really the theory that we come up with. And so we, we sort of do this combination of thinking about what is actually going on. Then we think about, do we have an explanation for it? And then often we don't have an explanation for it. And then we have to sort of come up with some sort of explanation. And that's, that's a theory. That's how we sort of explain the world. And that theory is often wrong, but that's okay. That's a starting point to see the world in a different way. And that's how you might sort of go through iterations to think about these things. Where you go and you, you look to see how it actually works in one location and then you transfer it to another location and you see if it works in that location. And you constantly are counting and thinking and, and trying to figure out the world 
in a very nice little pattern. And as you do this, you get a understanding of what's going on and it takes, so this is where you get the sort of bigger picture. All of this is really slow. It's a tedious step-by-step -step process where it's gonna take you a day to count all of the leaves in this particular location. But then you go to another location, you count all the leaves in another location. That's okay, that's the nature of it. It's slow, tedious, boring work, but that's how you discover the world. And as you do that repeatedly, you get a better insight on what's actually happening. So those two things, thinking about the world as if you can try to explain it, and then after that, thinking about how you can count and understand, just do simple counts. Just look at probability and statistics of certain, just counting, that's it. Simple basic counts of different areas and different things will allow you to understand the world in a much better way. All right, take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.